ladies and gentlemen, but mostly for the ladies, it is Women's History Month, and to celebrate here, let's talk about something awesome. I mean, that's all I really do, honestly, is talk about awesome things, but more specifically, women's MMA. From great fights like, honestly, both, Wiley Zhang and Joanna fights, uh, Jessica Penne, Michelle Waterson being my personal favorite, and Claudia Gadea versus Jessica Andrade, which honestly might be the best, there is a promotion that, well, you know, they actually haven't had a card in this current year, uh, but they've been going on for a while, around 12 years, and it's super awesome because it's all, it's actually an all-women promotion, Invicta. So what better way to celebrate women's MMA than to cover their very first card? Invicta 1 took place April 28th, 2012, when I was but a mere senior in high school. Kansas City, Missouri was where it took place. Um, this, see, this wasn't a televised event, but it was shown for free on Invicta's website back in the day. Your commentators are Mauro Ronaldo, Julie Ketsey, and actual family friend of mine, King Mo. Uh, he actually, <laughs> a little brag, went to a childhood birthday of mine. So the first fight of the night, we have Sarah Schneider and Sally Krumdiak. Krumdiak's putting on the pressure early for this main card with some plotting footwork, but Schneider's looking to kind of circle away. Krumdiak engages forward, ties up Schneider against the cage, really trying to get the inside trip and work some knees. A lot of dirty boxing, but Schneider just goes ahead and pulls guard. Schneider's trying to work her guard with Krumdiak bleeding all over her, probably from some sort of punches and exchanges inside the clinch. Schneider manages to get the triangle with Krumdiak trying to escape. The arm's trapped. Schneider transitions to take that instead. That's the fight. Sarah Schneider gets a super slick armbar win. This fight's quick. A little grindy at times, uh, but man, when they hit the mat, it was really fun. I love some good guard play. I love the jiu-jitsu going and flowing like this. So, um, probably for my jiu-jitsu bias, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10. I dig it, but I don't love it. So, I think a 6 out of 10 is kind of like my like average. Like You know what I mean? Like a little bit above average, probably. Next up, we have Sarah D'Alio versus Vanessa Mariscal. Strikeforce vet Sarah D'Alio fought ronda rousey but in the future she's going to get a dominant win over amanda nunes just a super dominant performance and out the gate dalio gets a quick takedown using a heavy top game to look for elbows early on she takes the back with one hook in she quickly gets the second flattens marty skull out marty skull is trying to get these hard scrambles but isn't going it dalio's trying to make this back position more comfortable so she can start landing the better shots and maybe look for a submission Marisco actually, near the end of the round, tosses uh, a back elbow, which is uh, which pretty awesome, admittingly, but a very dominant and constricting first round for Dialio. Second round, Marisco trying to make the striking worth, and Dialio, she's still putting the pressure on, tired and sloppy boxing, because the grappling seems to have worn both of them out a little bit, like in their arms, but Dialio does get the takedown. Back to her dominating ways, she takes the back, big punches, no stoppage. It's going on for a weirdly uncomfortable amount of time, but Marisco does tap out the strikes and this fight isn't awful it's not bad at all honestly uh i'm gonna go with another i was gonna go with a six but now that i kind of think about it, i got some time here i'm gonna go with a 5.5 because the grappling early was really fun and you don't see that many submissions to strikes and those are the big things that i like in it everything else really grindy so but i, I you know like i said i, I kind of dig this fight Next, we have a really fun fight on paper. Caitlin Young, a fighter with a head kick KO win over Misha Tate, and the person who got fired from the UFC for wanting a fighter union, Leslie Smith. Out the gate, they just start slugging it out. Young goes for a really good kick, but it's caught. Some good work from top position by Smith, but Young does get up. Smith having success, but Young is taking momentum back with like really good precise shots. Huge body kicks from Young. Smith trying to make it a dirty fight. Young is a more technical striker, but Smith is just not on that level, sadly. So she's having to make this really grindy and dirty and just a fun brawl. Fantastic first round for the entertainment factor. Second round, they're just putting the leather and shins on each other again. Leslie Smith just getting in there, tanking all these shots, still coming forward. This fight is actually really hard to score for me. Young is landing the cleaner shots with probably the better power, but I really like the aggression and volume of Smith still. Third round, great low kick from Young. Smith is trying to push the pace with no regard for her durability. Huge shots, and now Young gets forced to level change. She's trying for a takedown, but Smith gets on top. Good body shots from the top position. Young goes for an armbar. Smith escapes, then goes for her own armbar, but Young gets on top and escapes that. 
both of them just throwing heat still. Hard low kicks from Young that are sounding like gunshots. Just a crazy brawl, and I, I honestly really love this fight. And they go to the decision, it's a draw. But this fight, easy 9 out of 10 for me. Tons of action with hard power shots, with you know technique versus volume and aggression. Uh, great match on paper, and I think it definitely lived up to it. You can definitely show this fight to anyone. It's a great fight. Next up, we have a women's MMA veteran who is best known for nearly upsetting Ronda Rousey, Liz Carmouche. And she's taken on relative newcomer Ashley Curry, who is actually, she missed weight for this fight. Carmouche throws a hard kick, spinning back fist, then into a double leg, kind of a cool little sequence. And Carmouche just gets to work with shots to the body while in top position, mount super quickly, dropping hard bombs on Curry, one arm pinned by the knees, and these shots are just pouring in. Big TKO win in the first round for Liz Carmouche. This fight's quick, it's easy, it's simple, it's mean. Uh, you gotta love it, honestly. But, of course, being me, me being me, I want something a little bit more competitive, so 6 out of 10. But next up, we have two UFC vets, and Jessica Pinney and Lisa Ellis. But now this fight opens up. Testing the water, some jabs and some kicks. Ellis goes high with a kick, and Pinney is starting to put some forward pressure. That leads into a clinch, Ellis getting Pinney down into side control. Pinney scrambles, nearly gets put in the top side guillotine, but Pinney escapes, gets to the feet, lands a trip. Penny working on half guard for a while, but Ellis gets back to guard, uses an arm bar attempt to try to get back to the feet, some shots back and forth, another tie up into the clinch, into an Ellis takedown. Penny actually tosses the legs up and nearly gets a crucifix from the bottom at the very last second of the fight. Second round, back into the kickboxing with both girls using straight punches and roundhouses. Good left hand from Ellis who moves in and they tie up again. Ellis getting brought down from the clinch. Penny, she's trying to stack now and guard, but Ellis kicks her off and they're back on the feet. Another great clinch takedown for Ellis, but in the scramble, Penny's going for the leg lock. Ellis is trying to stay on top for the control and Penny's doing very well controlling the posture while being active. Armbar attempt comes from Penny, but Ellis slams her down. Penny's in half guard now, but gets a sweep with 10 seconds left. And Julie Ketsy on commentary says this is the equivalent of the previous Young Smith fight, but on the ground. Third round, and we're back to the kickboxing. Penny noticing some sting that Ellis has in her punches. Big straight right into a clinch attempt. Big throw from Ellis, but now blood is leaking from Ellis, like from her forehead and from her nose. Great roll through attempt from Penny, and now we're in her guard. Triangle attempt from Penny, who uses it to get top position and in mount. Ellis, big trouble. They're just pouring in, and the ref calls it for a third round TKO win for Jessica Penny. This fight's actually pretty awesome. <laughs> I actually really liked it. I'm gonna go with an 8.5 for this scramble fest. Super cool grappling. But now, it is the main event of the evening. Marlos Conan and Rami Rusin. Marlos Conan, I really, really wish she fought for the UFC. She was a favorite of mine at Strikeforce, honestly. But Misha Tate, she joins the commentary booth now as Kingmo leaves for the main event. Some striking early from Conan, landing great low kicks, good inside low kick, and Rusin just rushes Conan to the cage with a clinch. Some Holly homing here as Rusin is holding the cage with both hands so the ref gives her a point deduction and they reset in the middle. Conan catches a kick, lands a good knee to the leg off of it, good elbows and tight from Conan as they're sliding to the mat. Super weird stand up though. As the ref pulls them up as Conan was really close to finishing an Ezekiel choke from the top, Another striking exchange into the clinch, with Conan controlling it for the remainder of the round. Second round, both ladies throwing some shots. Conan's actually was staying on the outside, but now she's the one who's moving in and pressing Rusin into the cage. Rusin goes for that guard pull, but then like actually in a pretty cool moment, Conan is using the cage to hold her up with like a single collar essentially, and just bombs an elbow in. Uh, they're on the feet, but another clinch with Holly homing back and forth, mostly from Conan here, and that's just the rest of this round, sadly. Third round, back and forth. Big red hand lands for Conan, but Rusin is still in the fight trying to get back in it. Rusin tosses his spinning back fist and presses Conan to the cage. Yeah, it's a lot of clenching, a lot of holly homing. With about a minute left, the ref breaks them up and they're back to the striking. But Rusin is being pressed back to the cage in the striking. Conan controlling the clinch just like she has for the majority of the fight. Last second of the fight, big leg sweep for Conan. Puts a stamp on it as Marlos Conan wins a unanimous decision. And this fight is sadly, I think, the only one on this card that I would go, yeah, this isn't good. It's like a 4 out of 10 for me. Uh, with Because of my pet peeve, though, Holly homing clinching. I, I just hate it. Um, but that's the whole card, though. So, overall, what did I think of this? Well, I think if we were to be unfair, admittingly unfair, and compare it to UFC 1, this card is so much better. But it doesn't have the historical significance, and the sport has really evolved since then, so it's not really fair to compare those two. Um... 
The fights, though, were actually pretty good. Two in particular, uh, I really enjoyed. I have to give this card, I think, though, because of the overall of it. I think the a very average 6.5 out of 10. That said, there are some really good Invicta cards that I, I pray I get to cover in the future. With Invicta 5 having my favorite women's fight ever. Um, but that's it for me, though. Remember, if you want to see me review a card of your choice, then go ahead, join the Patreon, where it's just as a bonus. I will review anything I can get my hands on that you request. But remember, that's just the bonus, because you also receive access to content early, content from YouTube that they made us take down because copyright issues, super fun, uh, <laughs> and access to our newest Patreon-exclusive show, INC Uncaged, with me and Carl. It's, it's super fun shooting this. We always shoot those after the preview show. But anyways, I'm Joe at the INC. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.